We open on Crichton having to be a woman. <laughs> Meanwhile, I weep for all that wasted nail polish. But yeah, he finds the whole thing annoying and boring. Meanwhile, Rimmer gets his mail. I've won either a Holiday in Mauritius, a soft top sports car, or a fabulous matching set of egg cups. I've won the Holiday! Oh, they're taking the smeg. <laughs> what now? I've won the lottery as well. I mean, he's in jail, not to mention millions of years in a deep space, so of course he's getting all these things that he can't use. Here's one for you. Who from? Peterson. Wow, another Peterson reference already. What's happened to him? Something catastrophic. Anyway, he somehow found Lister's he's guitar in the guitar wreckage of Starbug, and he's going to send it to him. Are you okay? Of course I'm not okay! I hate your guitar! Didn't you get a clue that time I tried to insert it in you? You just got a better chance if you used the neck end. Hey, come on, come on, we're not the Om song. That was a classic. <laughs> um... There's a random reference to season three. People who heard that formed self-help groups. But once Lister gets the guitar, things look up for Rimmer. I feel like a man who leaps out of a plane with no parachute and lands in the hot tub at the Playboy Mansion. And more good news. Apparently their case is going to be reviewed, and if all goes well, it could mean their sentence being reduced. Standing there, right, right in front of me was this weird sort of mutant thing. With like two heads and all these tentacles. Yeah, two one look at me and ran off. Good old kill crazy. Meanwhile, Crichton is complaining about being classified as a woman, and the showering is mentioned. It's so hideously dull, I can't describe it. <laughs> oh my goodness, we've been frozen in time. I love how long this bit goes on. It must be a warp in the time-space continuum. How curious it isn't affecting me. We were just thinking about what you were saying. It's weird how Kachansky is missing in most of these shots. Apparently Chloe was sick while this was being filmed, so there's a limit to how much she could do. Anyway, Kill Crazy suggests that Crichton do some filming in that shower. Morally speaking, Using a hidden camera in the women's showers, taking shots of them, sudding themselves with mounds of foam. Yeah, Rimmer just doesn't want to mess up their appeal. Yeah, I'm appealing. That's a minority view. But I'm psh. We've just got to be model prisoners. Well, screw his appeal. I want to see skin. But of course, Crichton refuses. I'm a woman and proud of it. Well, excuse me, I'll be with my fellow sisters, doing it for ourselves. Go, Criters. I was beaten up and mugged. This bit is great. Apparently someone stole Ackerman's glass eye. Kill the lights. Is Rocket in this prison? Sounds like something he would do. I'm glad to see good sense prevail. Down to the gag with the false teeth. She thinks my eyes are my loveliest feature. If I go like this, I'm only half lovely! I know who stole your left peeper, sir. It was him, sir. I saw him playing marbles with it this morning, sir. Unfortunately, Rimmer is going to get himself in trouble at this rate. Afterwards, Crichton is knocked out. <laughs> Sometime later, I love that the creators of the show made their own bad movie, in the vein of the Angels with Filthy Souls bit in Home Alone. The Invisible Aliens! Look! There's one! <laughs> I love it when they go the extra mile like that instead of just showing clips for an old Roger Corman or Ed Wood movie. Good evening. But, uh, the movie gets interrupted. Brought to you courtesy of Karate TV. We bring you live and lithe Women's Shower Night! They got to him. They reprogrammed Crichton. Of course, this is all Kill Crazy's fault. Except that now Crichton is going to stare at a floor tile until they donate enough stuff. Going by Kill Crazy's reaction, apparently that wasn't part of the plan. Start filling those buckets! <laughs> I love that there are t-shirts already. You can find knockoffs of those online, by the way. Anyway, Rimmer and Lister keep trying to leave to tell someone about this. Rimmer because of the appeal, and Lister because he's worried that Kachansky will think he's involved. It's a Crichton visitor, sir. So somehow Crichton has gotten rich off of this. Lister thinks he knows how to reprogram Crichton so he'll go back to normal, but Crichton doesn't want that. It's made me rich, feared, and respected. I'm loving every minute of it. Ah, uh, Miss Kachansky, I have a little gift for you. You know you were worried about picking up Verrucas in the shower room. Well, I got the perfect solution. A waterproof pogo stick. Remember when Kachansky used to be smart? Think of the money. Think of the show. <laughs> I'm not gonna let you do this. Do what? Anyway, Lister lets her in on what Crichton has been up to. That's me! 
I saw the whole thing. All three terrible hours of it. They let them take three hour long showers in prison? I doubt that. I've got a merchandising meeting in two minutes. <laughs> Excuse me. Of course, Kachansky is mad that Lister just watched instead of doing something about it. You've seen me with no clothes on when we went out. I wanted to see if anything had changed. If I'd known it meant that much to you, that you needed to see me naked so badly, I wouldn't necessarily have said no. We're friends, aren't we? Chris. No, not ever. But you just said... We're not friends anymore. Yeah, you had that coming. Sometime later, he's trying to make it up to her. A bag of flour. Two bags. Flour. Flowers. That's too cute. I don't think I could stay mad at him. I can just see her reading the card. To make up for it, and to indicate how truly sorry I am, here's two bags of self-raising. Something I didn't need any help with yesterday. Looks like Crichton got himself into trouble. The girls found out about shower night. They attacked me, cleaned out my system, and kicked me out. I've been reclassified as a man. A little later, he apologizes and figures Lister has heard the news about Kachansky. What news? You haven't heard. Heard what? The news. What news? You haven't heard the news. I love this bit. I can't believe you don't know. No what? No one told you. Told me what? I'm so traumatized, no one's had the guts to tell you the horrible, terrible, terrible, appallingly hideous, awful news. Anyway, it turns out that Kachansky has gone back to her ex, the guy she left Lister for. Only now he has a name. He's taking her to the officers' club tonight. A probation permits it, provided she's back by ten. You're taking this very well, sir. I, I'm really impressed. No, I'm not, man. I'm falling apart. I know that. But I was just trying to cheer you up. <laughs> Anyway, Crichton is a changed bot, and suddenly he wants Lister and Kachansky to get together. Yeah, sure. The new me wants you to have children so I can iron those itty-bitty little socks. You know, that part I could believe. Either way, he's going to help Lister sabotage the date. So they're going to sneak into Tim's quarters and leave things that will make him look bad. A half-eaten onion sandwich. That's always a passion killer. I like those. Morris Dancer Monthly. What a total dweebo nerdmeister to look with those. They're mine. Tragically unfashionable underpants. They're mine. Christian rock music. Have you been going through my things? This is the piece de resistance. So Lister sneaks into the room through a vent, leaves the magazines and CDs on the table, the onion sandwich under a couch cushion, hangs up that poster, puts a fish on a light bulb, and crumbs in the bed and uses those scissors. Assassin. Turns out he's been on Crydy TV all this time. Great disguise. Here he comes now. So Crichton made up the bit about Kachansky dating Tim, and those quarters that Lister just trashed actually belong to Ackerman. You said the girls had restored you back to normal. Whoops. You've been crittered. Even Lister thought that was kind of funny. The appeal! <laughs> Anyway, Ackerman is coming back soon, so Lister has to find a way back into that room so that he can clean it back up before then. Sorry to keep droning on about this, but what about... THE APPEAL! Not sure why Lister didn't just go through that vent since that's how he got in in the first place, but oh well. In any case, they manage it. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time! <laughs> there he is! I was just trying to boost the rating, sir! It was just a prank, bra. Later, Lister finally gets that appeal they've been trying to get, and... YES! From this day forth, all inmates with no records of violence or depression will be allowed to have strings on their guitars. This appeal was all about guitar strings. You didn't think it was about getting out of here, did you? It's a bad day for Rimmer. And as a personal thank you, I thought I'd write you a song. Aww. And so ends Crydie TV. So, this episode... Oh boy. Well... Like I've said, unfortunately there's a lot of jokey jokes in season 8 that involve women having no autonomy. They're just kind of there as prizes for male characters when they manage to crack the code that allows them to do whatever they want. First there was the sexual magnetism virus in Back in the Red, and then there was... Actually, why was Kachansky going to sleep with Rimmer and Cassandra? Not a fan of Kachansky being dumbed down like this. And now Crichton is filming women nude without their consent. Ha ha. I can't wait for season 8 to be over. But if you can get past that, there are funny parts in this episode. Crichton is great, and so is the whole Crichty TV angle in general. Parts of it actually feel like YouTube prank videos, which is interesting. Rimmer is great too, and of course that bit near the beginning with Ackerman. Is Lister out of character in this one? Yes and no. Lister can be dumb, especially when it comes to Kachansky, so his handling the filming of her in a bad way doesn't seem to be out of character. 
My only issue is that after the fallout, he still doesn't seem to care about what happened to Kachansky. He only feels bad because she's mad at him. And I feel like Lister should maybe be a bit more mature than that at this point. And again, nothing about how every male prisoner has seen Kachansky naked and she has to deal with the fallout from that. She's basically a prop in season 8. So yeah, this one is a mixed bag. Parts of it are good, but parts of it are kind of gross. Next up is Pete. See you then. Prison regs. You're not allowed anything you can hang yourself with. Wouldn't want to hang myself if they had me guitar strings. I think they were thinking of me. 